welcome to evening prayer for Monday, December the 6th, and this is Nicholas of Smyrna Day. Uh, so what? Well, actually, this is Santa Claus. This is where we get Santa Claus from. Now, the stories about St. Nicholas are many and varied, and it's very difficult to know exactly what's fact and fiction, because in the medieval period, people tended to add mythical stories uh, and then sort of incorporate them as fact, which really makes life very confusing. But he died in about 326, which means he was a victim of the latest uh, persecution of the church before the toleration of the faith. Um, but he really um, is known uh, for the tradition of basically giving gifts to the poor and leaving money for those who were destitute. Uh, one famous story involves him leaving money for a family who are going to have to sell um, their children, uh, sell their daughter into human slavery. Well, you know, this happens today quite prolifically in poor countries, uh, that uh, children, girls are, are snatched away from their families or paid for um, because their families are in extreme poverty. Uh, and they obviously end up in places where we'd never want anyone to end up. So there's a very important little message behind uh, the real St. Nicholas. And of course we do remember that older St. Nicholas traditions are very much about um, those acts of kindness to the poor and also, of course, the idea of presence for the deserving. And the way we des are become deserving in Jesus Christ, of course, is through believing in him, not through doing good works, because we can never possibly do enough to merit our salvation. With those thoughts in mind, let's turn to evening prayer. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise forever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Psalm 144 Blessed be the Lord my rock, who teaches my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my steadfast help and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues the peoples under me. O Lord, what are mar mortals that you should consider them, mere human beings that you should take thought for them, they are like a breath of wind. Their days pass away like a shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains and they shall smoke. Cast down lightnings and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and let the thunder roar. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and take me out of the great waters from the hand of foreign enemies, whose mouth speaks wickedness, and their right hand is the hand of falsehood. O oh God, I will sing to you a new song. I will play to you on a ten-stringed harp. You that give salvation to kings and have delivered David your servant. Save me from the peril of the sword and deliver me from the hand of foreign enemies, whose mouth speaks wickedness, whose right hand is the hand of falsehood so that our sons in their youth may be like well-nurtured plants and our daughters like pillars carved for the corners of the temple. Our barns be filled with all manner of store, our flocks bearing thousands and ten thousands in our fields. Our cattle be heavy with young. May there be no miscarriage or untimely death, no cry of distress in our streets. Happy are the people whose blessing this is. Happy are the people who have the Lord for their God. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. If you're reading the Old Testament reading, it's Isaiah 45, beginning at verse 14. We're going to read the first chapter of Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labour of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of people we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place where your faith in God has become known so that we have no need to speak about this. For the people of those regions report among us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son in heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over much. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children, forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I'll make you ruler over much. So, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your unfailing love. And today we pray that that unfailing love will be shed abroad to defend and protect, to heal relationships. And to work in the international arena to grant us grace to be able to effectively deal with the issues raised by what's going on in the world right now. We pray that there will be peace in Ukraine and that Russia will not seek to encroach upon Ukrainian territory. We pray that there will be a positive relationship between Azerbaijan and Armenia. We pray that the Chinese will not seek to keep on extending their influence across the South China Sea, encroaching on other people's territories. We also pray that there will be no armed conflict of any kind in a Chinese attempt to recover Taiwan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer pray that the Lord will guide the leaders of the world in knowing how to deal with the quite enormous refugee crisis. Uh, and we do pray that here, that the public will get a wider understanding of the incredible challenge that we face in the world. And not merely castigate the government for not being able to handle everything to do with 
this particular issue. We pray that the Lord will grant us grace to know what to do with each person who does appear in this land, how to care for them, how to love them, how to serve them, and how to correctly interpret the reasons for their being here. And uh, Lord Jesus, we particularly pray for the unaccompanied children. We recognise that some people are so desperate for a better life for their families that, that they will put children ahead of them. And we do pray that they can be nurtured and cared for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before the Lord today the work of the National Health Service. And Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. It's a wonderful thing. But the challenges just keep on increasing. Pray that we can in, uh, train enough doctors and nurses for future needs. We pray that the money we've been given will be spent well and wisely. We've no idea how it's ever going to be possible to reduce waiting lists, but we pray that it can happen. And we pray that the Lord will grant us grace to know how to deal with the ongoing challenge of COVID, knowing that there's tremendous difficulties in health and well-being if we're shut inside. And yet we really don't want vulnerable people uh, catching any variation of COVID. So we pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll have mercy upon us and give us immense wisdom, wisdom way beyond our own capacity of thought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, lover of souls, who chose your servant Nicholas to be a bishop in the church, that he might give freely out of the treasures of your grace, Make us mindful of the needs of others. And as we have received, so teach us also to give. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let me do something about the light. The problem with winter sun is it gets very low and then it shines straight in through windows and so um, we thank the Lord for the light and remember Jesus as the light of the world and watching and waiting through Advent for that light and so awaiting his coming in glory as our Saviour taught us so we pray our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.